So the first thing that we're going to start with is um, the words biotic and abiotic. So um, biotic and abiotic factors. So before we actually talk about the word biotic and the word abiotic, I want to actually talk about the word sexual and the word asexual. So when we talk about sexual reproduction, what we're talking about is not just sex, not just copulation between two organisms, because a lot of organisms actually reproduce sexually without having sex. For example, flowers um, reproduce sexually, but there's no sex that's happening in, in the flower. There are um, male reproductive organs that produce sperm and there are female reproductive organs that produce um, ovules, um, the eggs, and then the sperm fertilizes the egg and you get a fertilized cell. So you have a haploid cell and another haploid cell joining together to form a diploid cell. That's, that's sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction, the easiest example is to talk about bacteria where the bacteria undergo binary fission where they just actually um, replicate their chromosome and then split in half. So they're completely um, genetically identical. It's not taking the genes from two different parental cells and, um, and getting a, uh, a new uh, genotype out of it. You're actually just creating a complete clone of the organism. There's some other ways that, that you can have asexual reproduction. So now that we've reviewed sexual and asexual reproduction, let's think about the term sexual, having sexually reproduced or asexual, which means not having sexually reproduced. So that A in front of abiotic just means that it's not biotic. So we need to talk about what does biotic mean. So biotic um, has the prefix bio, and that means living. So a biotic is a living component of an ecosystem. And we said that abiotic has the A in front of it, so that's going to mean not biotic. So uh, an abiotic factor is going to be a non-living component of an ecosystem um, or a physical condition that you find in an ecosystem. So let's talk about some specific examples um, of biotic and abiotic. And by specific examples, I mean specific generalized categories of them. Uh, so biotic versus abiotic. So the things that we're typically talking about when we're talking about biotic are things like plants and animals, right? Um, or fungus or protus or bacteria. So when we're talking about biotic, we're talking about producers, things that are capable of producing their own food by converting energy that they obtain elsewhere, primarily plants obtaining sunlight and going ahead and converting that sunlight into chemical energy in the form of glucose. There are other types of producers. So those are our autotrophs. Remember autotrophs? Our producers are one level of biotic um, factors. Another would be consumers. Consumers obviously consume matter in order to obtain their energy. So I am going to eat, um, I think, salmon for dinner. So that's going to be how I obtain my energy. I'm a, I'm a consumer. And then decomposers, and decomposers obtain their energy by breaking down um, dead matter, and that helps to recycle that matter um, into the, the ecosystem. Abiotic factors, we've got this little way that we can remember it. It's SWATS, and SWATS stands for soil, water, air, temperature, and sunlight. So basically we're going to go ahead and we're going to describe those five things. So I could say I have very um, coarse soil and uh, the water is fairly deoxygenated, the air is very hot um, or the air is very polluted and the temperature is very hot and there is a lot of very direct sunlight. So those would be are abiotic factors, are physical conditions that limit the ecosystem.